Ostia is very much the mirror of ancient Rome. Ostia Antica is the best reflection of what ancient Rome looked like in its heyday. So we have there a picture of ancient life that we cannot get from almost any other site. This is the hub. This is the place where people and commerce and trade are happening. Everything to support what really happens in Rome. It is a, the, Rome's vital connection to the outside world. And it's a place when you come to Rome, you need to go see. Originally, Ostia was built at the head of the Tiber River as a castrum, which is a military camp, and this was uh, to protect the city of Rome. The Romans founded the city of Ostia at the mouth of the Tiber River to fortify, to prevent their enemies from sailing up the mouth of the river and attacking Rome directly from the Tiber route. We can definitely think of Ostia as a lifeline to Rome. Rome is not on the Mediterranean, so it's easy to cut it off. It's easy to shut it down. So they had to ensure that they have a good relationship and a steady line of communication with Ostia. Ostia then becomes a fundamental key in the well-being of the city of Rome. What's happening is you're getting grain coming in from a lot from North Africa and also Southern Italy. It's coming in, it's getting offloaded here at Ostia. Then the grain is being taken into these various warehouses, some of which are back over here, called Horia. These warehouses are basically big storage facilities. These things are really, really tight. The grain is the lifeblood, the grain is the money, the grain is gold. Pretty much everything that was destined for Rome stopped off first in Ostia. So that's grain, olive oil, it's wine, it's all the luxury goods. Everything is being checked here, everything is being cataloged, everything is being recorded, and then at a later stage, put onto smaller ships and towed upriver by slaves or by oxen. Ostia is unique in that it is one of the few totally or basically totally preserved ancient cities, has not been built over, has not been destroyed completely. So we have this, this incredible opportunity to study the daily life of the Romans and also to see where they worked in an entire context. So we have a bakery here, a fullery here, a temple here. We can actually get a feel for the entire city as a living, breathing organism, and that helps us to reconnect to the past in a way that we normally don't get to do when you have just a small corner of a building exposed in a foundation. Imagine people walking back and forth and taking care of their business, buying groceries, getting their laundry done, going to the theater, all of this being done in a very short distance and a short radius from the central point of their life. We're inside right now the House of the Millstones, which is a site located near the center of the ancient city of Ostia. This is, was a working bakery and one of the two largest bakeries in the city. So what we have behind me here in this room are kneading troughs troughs that were used to knead the bread, or the actual grind, ground wheat, with water. And in the room next door, behind us, there is a whole series of millstones, actual mills used to grind the, the grain into wheat that was then brought into here and mixed with water and kneaded. And uh, this is a very important site because it shows one of the major activities of Ostia Antica, bringing in grain from all parts of the Roman Empire, bringing it inside the city from the Tiber River, storing it in the warehouses like the one right across the street from us, and then bringing it into structures like this, grinding it into flour, mixing that and creating bread, which was the source of the majority of, of the daily caloric intake of ancient Romans. There is no generic ancient city. We can't look at one place and say, this is the quintessential city of antiquity. But Ostia has these key components that we then can relate to Rome. Rome as a city, is no longer visible the way that Ostia is. For an archaeologist, this is the open laboratory. There's nothing like Ostia. There's so much of ancient Rome that does exist, but so much of it is not visible on a daily basis. There's so many things, but they're in isolation. Where's that continual experience of ancient Rome? You don't have it anymore because medieval Rome was built on top of it, Renaissance Rome was built on top of that, and so forth. Where do we go to get the uninterrupted experience of what ancient Rome was like? we go to Ostia Antica. If we think about the specialization of labor, the organization of everyday life, the mass distribution system that is organized here in Ostia for Rome, what we can see here is the origins of the cultural dynamics and logic that we will call later on modernism. So a place like Ostia, when we can actually walk around the streets and visit one structure after another, all in context, all together, we can actually see 
uh, human existence uh, suddenly collapsing, this enormous span of time that we're accustomed to think of as so remote, these 2,000 years that separate us from the heyday of Ostia, suddenly collapse, I think, into a very short period where you can actually see the continuity of human existence. All the things that we do in daily life, the Ostians and the Romans, are exactly the same things in a slightly different form. But really, fundamentally, human nature, I think, has not changed, and even human behavior has not changed radically in the last 3,000 years. Ostia really does show us that the more things change, often really the more they stay the same.